Hi, I'm Kiwi, and I am not a web designer. <laughs> I avoided making a website for a really long time because I didn't know how, and I didn't think I needed it because I had a bunch of social media to post my art on. But now that I'm in a more professional environment, I realized that every artist should have a website, whether they're freelancing or looking for a job in the industry, or even if they're just doing it for fun, it's a good idea to have a website because you have more control over the way you're presented and people can contact you easier and you can really just showcase your best work. Which is why I'm super duper excited that Wix is sponsoring this video so that I actually have the opportunity to talk about this. I've actually been using Wix since way before they sponsored this video. Um, here at Savannah College of Art and Design, I took a class on computer arts and applications, and the professor actually required that we use Wix in order to build a website for an assignment. So what are the components of a good portfolio site? Number one, layout and general design. Number two, contact info. Number three, your gallery. That's an important one. Number four, about the artist. Number five, commission info. And number six, device compatibility. I'll explain that a little bit more later. So first off, layout. But like I said, I'm not a web designer, but I don't have to be because there are a bunch of templates and layouts on Wix that you can choose from that are made by people who actually know what they're doing. So they can make you look like you know what you're doing. It's perfect. The design of your site should match your art style. What? What's the vibe? Are you super bright and bubbly? Are you minimalistic and sleek? Do you have kind of an edgier look? Do you use a lot of textures? Use those as ideas and jumping off points for what you want your website to look like. But whatever you choose, make sure to keep it simple because your artwork is what you want to be showcasing, not the website itself. A good rule of thumb is to only use two or up to three different fonts in your website. This is a little known fact, but Every time somebody uses more than three fonts in their website, a graphic design major loses their wings. When you pick a layout, you should always have some kind of menu that's easy to access so people can see exactly what content you have in your website. Number two, contact info. Listen to me. Listen to me right now, I'm about to tell you something very important. Smack that contact info everywhere just sling it in as many places as you can on the header, on the footer, on your t-shirt and your walls and ceiling and friends and neighbors. Just put it everywhere because if somebody can't find your contact information or they have to go digging for it, you might miss out on really good opportunities and nobody wants that. And one of the primary functions of your site is so that people can contact you more easily. You definitely need your email address available everywhere, and you can also use these handy-dandy little bars called social bars. Just click this little plus add symbol and go to social bars, and they have a whole bunch of different styles that you can choose from, and each button will link out to your different profiles, so you can customize it to match whatever theme you have. A lot of artists have a separate page on their site dedicated just to contact information, and it's a good place to put a contact form as well, which are these useful little boxes where people can just type in them and send an email right there instead of copying and pasting your email address and going through all that. Okay, the gallery. The gallery is obviously a super important part of a visual artist website, or actually any kind of artist. And since it's all going to revolve around your gallery and your work, make sure it's really easy to get to. Mine is my homepage, so as soon as you come to my website, bam, right there. Look at it. You gotta. There are a lot of different gallery styles that are available here. I like the ones where you can click and zoom in and like scroll through them because it adds a little bit more interactivity to it. Um, I recommend splitting up your work into a few different galleries, especially if you have a lot of work. And here's something that I think a lot of artists get wrong don't include a ton of work. You would think that having more work would be more interesting to a wider variety of people, but that's really not how it works. In order to make a really good impression, each gallery should only have about eight to 10 images in it. And they've gotta be like your very best ones. Like if you got a piece from like a few years ago and you're like, this is pretty good still, just don't include it. Only choose the very best ones that you want to represent you. 
Also, higher quality images are not necessarily better. Obviously, you don't want them to be fuzzy, but if you make them ridiculously high quality, they'll take a really long time or might not load at all on everyone's browsers. So choose a reasonable quality. Not bonkers, just good. The About page. People want to know more about you than just your work. Especially professionals looking to hire, they want to see a picture of you and an artist statement. I'm using a self-portrait because I feel like it represents what I'm about a bit more. But if you're a photographer, then obviously you would want a really nice photograph of yourself. When you're writing an artist statement, think about your interests. How would you describe your style? Where do you want to go from here? What are your goals and your dreams? What kind of art do you want to be doing in the future? What inspires you? What makes you happy? Is there anything that you're trying to accomplish? Is there anything that you have accomplished? Details like this give people a better idea of what influences you in your art and who you are, and it also makes you more approachable and hireable. You're also going to want to add a link to your resume in PDF form if you have one. Okay, commission information. Not everybody takes commissions, but if you do, you definitely, definitely, definitely need to advertise that on your site, big and bold for everybody to see. Keep the page simple as well, keep your prices really straightforward, and give people a concise description of what you expect from them and what they can expect from you. Slap down that good old contact information again, and that's also a good place for another one of those contact forms. Having your commission information on a site like this is really helpful because if you ever need to come back and change it, it's going to update in real time. So anybody who has that link will always have an updated version of your prices and information. Device compatibility. So if you spend a lot of time and love and put your all into making this gorgeous, beautiful website and it just looks like a big old nasty plate of casserole on mobile, then that's not gonna help you very much. So make sure you can view it on any device and it's gonna look flawless. On Wix, you can click this button up here to switch to the mobile version. And if it is kind of a mess, you can use the page layout optimizer and that'll usually fix most of the problems that you have with formatting. And anything else you can easily just drag or hide in order to make it look right. There are a lot of other really helpful widgets and accessories that you can add to your site, like analytics so you can tell how many people are visiting, comment sections so that people can interact a little bit more, blogs, music, videos, members. You can even make a membership mailing list thing. But remember, whatever you do, keep the layout simple. Also, this applies to posting your art anywhere online, not even necessarily making a website, but don't wait until you're good enough. I've had a lot of people tell me that they're not sure when they're going to start posting because they don't feel like they're good enough yet, but you should be posting because it makes you happy. Post because you want to share what you made with the world. There is no level that's good enough. You don't have any thresholds to cross before you can start putting yourself out there. And if you don't put yourself out there, then you're gonna miss a lot of opportunities that you could have taken otherwise. But if you are ready to start making a website, you can follow the link on the screen or in the description box. And feel free to check out my website, kiwibird.com. I've got some pieces on there that I haven't uploaded on YouTube or actually anywhere else, so... And my commissions are almost always open, so I'm gonna check that out too. Lastly, I just really want to thank you guys for watching my videos and sticking around if you've been a subscriber for a while. And if you're not a subscriber and you're just now coming to my channel, Thank you for that too, I really appreciate it. Um, and I've been really busy with school lately, so there hasn't been a lot of content coming out, but I've got some big stuff planned soon, and just between you and me, I'm gonna do some more tablet giveaways soon, so clicking that subscribe and hitting the bell icon might be a good idea. So yeah, thanks again, and thank you to Wix for sponsoring this video. And I hope that was helpful. If you have any questions, put them in the comments, and if I can't answer them, then somebody else may be able to. And also feel free to advertise your website in the comments. I don't mind at all. So thanks. Bye.